what is up guys and welcome back to my channel I am Tom if this is the first time you've come across my channel then please like and subscribe and comment away as I do videos on basically whatever I feel like doing a video on and as you can tell by the title uh, today we're gonna make well talk about how we make ourselves float so let's get right in the video Now, first of all, I'm just going to say it now, I'm not going to be able to put like screen recording, which is what most people do. Uh, my laptop is on its last legs, so to do any sort of screen recording is kind of out of the question because I feel like it would just burst into flames. However, I will be putting up screenshots of what I mean. And honestly, for today's video, you don't really need screen recording anyway, you get the general gist of what needs to be done. So, first of all, I want to say what well, I was first of all. Secondly, I want to say I got this video inspiration from Peter McKinnon and Con. Chances are, if you've watched this type of video before, chances are you've come across Peter McKinnon before. He's a brilliant Canadian videographer and photographer and has like so many million subscribers or something. I don't know, he's, he's mental anyway. If I will link his video down below. Um, if, but if you guys haven't come across him before, please check him out. And Con is more of a lesser known but still brilliant videographer for, well, in England. He usually does a lot of stuff for the Sidemen. Um, Sidemen sort of like KSI and stuff. KSI and Miniminter and Zerka and Bazinga and Vic and Toby and Harry. Always forget Harry. Um, anyway, he's a brilliant videographer for Sidemen as well as a photographer. So I'll link his video down below as well as just because that's another guy that I saw do this and I just felt like I had to make it my own like attempt. So to get started you need obviously a location that you want to do. Um, I chose the beach um, because we went away for the day and it was just a nice beach. So I chose the beach. Now there is basically like all you need to do really is take two photos for this. You need one of the background and then you need one with you in it. Preferably both took at the same time in the same place for lighting purposes. Because if you take one one place and take the picture of you in it from somewhere else, you might have a completely different lighting. It might look, look really weird in your photo. So if possible, take both at the same time. If not, you might need to just mess around with Lightroom and Photoshop to make sure the lighting looks right and what have you. So to get started, you take the photo of your scenery that you want. Um, just wherever you position the camera, just take a photo there and also if you can keep the camera in the same position but that's not m as much of a problem. Um, I know for a fact I didn't but other people suggest you do and it makes sense for also for the lighting problems because if you move a camera somewhere else the camera might think the lighting's different and change it all, blah blah blah. Anyway, so take the photo of the scenery with Preferably no one else in it if you don't want that. Um, yeah, just take a photo of the scenery and then get someone else or put your camera on a tripod with a timer or another way of setting up your camera where you can take the photo when you want to. Preferably someone else does it just for ease of purpose. Um, and then you go into the scenery and you jump and kind of position your body in a sort of jumping motion. Um, just so you know, you will feel incredibly silly doing it because you are doing a weird jump where you chances are you're sticking your chest out and you've got your arms flopping behind you and yeah, you look daft and you also get quite a few funny photos looking back um, but yeah, that's the general gist you take them to and then when you finally got a photo of you jumping that you like um, like I said, that could take several attempts if you're as bad as me and you look ridiculous no matter what position you put yourself in. You then jump into Lightroom and Photoshop. Obviously you don't need Lightroom at all for this, but Lightroom, I prefer to use it for editing photos, whatever. But you might, like I say, might not need to. Edit the photos how you like with temperature and contrast and all that jazz. And then when you're done, take it into Photoshop and use your selection tool or pen tool or whatever and just literally just draw around you. Um, I'm not that great with Photoshop so I use quick selection and just mess about with that. Um, obviously it depends on how contrasting you are to the background. If you're a completely different colour and it's like a plain background then 
chances are quick selection is pretty easy for you, pretty good. Um, but if you're in a more complex environment or you have similar colours to the background, quick selection is not going to help you in any way because it'll probably chance that it'll think that your t-shirt or something is a part of the background and will select that at the same time no matter how many times you try and get it not to. It just will because it's a pain. But then you select around yourself and then basically you turn yourself and put yourself in the first photo of the scenery so it looks like you're floating and that's that basically that is a really quick way of explaining it but that is the best way of doing it really it's very simple it's very easy you just got to take some practice and get some photoshop you don't need photoshop either you just need some sort of photo that has layers and has the ability to cut you out that's all you need um, I suppose there's probably several others like GIMP for example, GIMP's a free one I never really got on with GIMP but it is out there and it's it's probably ancient now but it's, it'll do the job um, but obviously Photoshop's the go-to one but yeah that's that, then you position yourself and then you can mess around with it, put yourself in different positions um, different sizes, if you are going to change your size try to convert your layer with yourself into a smart object once you've cut yourself out because then it doesn't matter how small or how big you could you make yourself it'll keep the same sort of image quality so that's the that's a good idea if you're going to be messing around with sizes and stuff to make sure you convert to a smart object uh, if you do convert to a smart object make sure it's after all the cutting's done because once you convert to a smart object you have to then rasterize it I think to be able to edit it again and all other pain in your bum so yeah so quick go over, you need at least two photos, you need one of the scenery with without you in it, preferably no one else, just makes it a bit easier, a bit of a bit nicer I think anyway. And then a photo of you jumping, making it look like you are floating away. Um, like I said I could take several attempts, I know it for certain it did for me. And you will look, and well not, you might not look like it but you will feel like you look like you are really silly. I know I did when a few other people was looking at me from the beach um, but yeah you do that, take it in Photoshop, edit it how you want and then cut yourself out of that second photo put yourself in the first photo of just the scenery and then turn yourself around resize you if need be and job's done and then if you want, I know what I did, I thought it was a bit too flat so I made the background image, the one with just the scenery I put like a little Gaussian blur in there. I think I put like literally two pixels or maybe three pixels worth of Gaussian blur. Um, and it just blurred it out a little bit and just made me stand out a bit more from the background. Obviously, I think that depends on what background you choose. I chose a very plain background, like the beach and the sea and the sky was very beigey. <laughs> so um, yeah, just bear that in mind. You might want to use other techniques to kind of make yourself stand out. Um, like Gaussian Blur and then that's that if you want to upload that to Instagram make sure you crop it, well you don't have to but you try and crop it to a 4x5 or a 5x4 depending on what aspect ratio well whether you want it portrait or landscape and there job is done that's that and then export it, whack it in your phone upload it to Instagram you've made some float, congrats and yeah that's that done so I hope you guys have enjoyed um, like I say I haven't been able to see what screenshots I've got yet because I haven't been able to do a screen recording so I hope the screenshots helped it at all and uh, check Con and Peter down below their video link will be in the descriptions well the videos will be in the description and yeah adios follow me in social medias all stuff down below in a bit